There's no bell. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's no bell. And so they'll they'll also contact us to exactly what the company did on the school and stuff that comes through. How's that? It's just preparing. Yeah. Okay, you're all set. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hello. Welcome to the Select Board Interview Subcommittee on uh, today's lovely rainy August fifteenth, two thousand twenty-three. Um. Pursuant to chapter two of the acts of 2023, an act relative to the extending certain COVID-19 measures, this meeting will be conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance by the members of the public will be permitted. The order allows the interview subcommittee to meet entirely remotely so, as, so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. All members of the interview subcommittee are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of this meeting may do so by going to Northborough Remote Meetings on YouTube via the link listed on the agenda. This meeting will not feature public comment. Each vote taken this evening will be conducted by roll call vote. When I call your name, please respond in the affirmative, all members. Julianne Hirsch. I'm here. <laughs> and I, Kristen Wickstead, am here. Um, and I'm also thinking if someone is just now clicking on that remote access YouTube thing, they've well, they've already they've already done it because they're hearing me. So anyway, very confusing script. But anyway, hello everyone. Um, it's 522. Are we ready for our first um Customer, Kate. No, oh, I think you're she's muted. In, she's in the waiting room. I'm happy to let her in for you. you yeah, me? sure. Okay. Thank you. I just have to find my resumes now because they're not in order. Anymore. Let's see. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Hi, Kate. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for oh, having me. Just the writer's left. Sorry, that's my. <laughs> I already, I've already done this once today. Zoom just likes to defer to work things sometimes. Um, okay, so welcome to the interview subcommittee. I'm just uh, scrolling down to your resume because, as you know, things got a little out of order. Here you are. Um, oh, yes, with that, um, time. yeah, Diane's really great, and she puts everything in order in the order people are coming, but then we had two people move, and now you're first, and you were supposed to be third, so okay. <laughs> anyway, I found you. Um, thank you for thank you for volunteering. Um, how did you find out about um, the traffic safety committee needing people? Um, the first time I heard about it, I was actually volunteering at the last town election. Okay. And um, some of the people that I was standing with just had mentioned it. Uh, so I started paying attention to the website and um, watched the meeting for the temporary committee. Um, and then when the town email came out looking for volunteers, I thought it seemed like a good fit for me. Great. Cool. Um, Julianne, did you want to ask a question? Do you want to have a turn? Well, well, uh, the first question we usually ask is, um, why are you, why, you know, why this committee and not another committee? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so this is my first time applying to be on a committee in the town. Um, I work for an insurance company. I've done that for almost 20 years and I'm currently an in-house attorney. And so a big part of my job is investigating auto accidents and um, talking about traffic safety and determining liability and different things like that. So in addition to that, I also am a runner. Um, so safety on the roadway is very, very important to me. Kate, do you live uh, um so, so it, 
do you live near like the Wegmans area? Somewhat. I live on Davis Street, um, the short, very windy, very narrow part um, near Yamazakura and Romaine's. Okay. Okay. So, so um, that, that really, the traffic pattern there changed when we got the, the big mall with Wegmans, right? Right. Um, I, I'm curious, in, in retrospect, now looking back, do you think that, that, you know, say, for example, we had this committee that um, we, we could have done something more proactively to think about the impact of that that situation on traffic on Davis and the whole town, basically. Uh, so I have only lived in this house for three and a half years. Uh -huh. Oh, um, okay. I've lived yeah. in other parts of town. So um, that being said, I have heard a lot about that process. Um, my father was the police chief before Chief Liver. No oh, kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, my maiden name is Leahy. Oh. Um, so I've heard a lot about that from him. So I would say probably um, a committee like this could have helped out quite a bit. Yeah. Can I ask another question? Sure. So, so obviously your resume is very interesting. You know, you've seen a lot of, a lot of situations of traffic problems and accidents and things like that. Um, has that, so has that like triggered in your mind how various things of how things could be done more safely or is your job more, um, you know, kind of the legal aspect? Uh, it's definitely more the legal aspect. Um, I work in recovery for the insurance company. So after they pay out the claim, it's my job to find out if there was somebody else liable. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that does entail town's liability. That's interesting. Yeah, not North. Yeah, Carolina. you bring you bring something. I thought we had such great people on the last traffic and safety committee because they all brought something different, but you bring something yet again, different and new. Um, I was really surprised when I was reading your, um, your, you know, your little application form and then your letter and uh, that, yeah, you, you deal with auto accidents, but that I didn't realize like sometimes towns are liable. liable. Yeah, you don't think about that, do you? I mean, I'm sure the police do, but we don't. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, when a sign comes down and it doesn't get put back up or markings are faded and not um, fixed, but also, you know, looking at areas where accidents occur frequently and there are complaints made or suggestions made and how often that happens and what happens as a result of those suggestions. Right. Interesting. Wow. So, so Kate, um, you know, there's there's more applicants um, than than positions. Um, so I'm going to phrase the question: If if you're voted in by the select board, what what do you think the first steps would be for this new committee? Um, I think first of all, um, there needs to be one central place for residents to voice their concerns. Um, I know there are a few different ones now um, between the DPW and the police department websites. Um, I'm not sure that there is really an overlap, but what I didn't see was kind of a general place to ask a question or make a suggestion or place a concern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if you're aware that um, we changed the configuration of the committee a little bit. The, the, we, uh, the, so it will be, you know, the four residents, a DPW representative and a police representative. So oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize that, but that yeah. was that definitely something that I was thinking to suggest. Yeah. Chief Liver um, definitely 
said that he uh, or a representative right. from this department belongs on the committee, which I thought was a good idea because, mm -hmm. I mean, they also, well, you probably grew up with this, but they know things that the rest of us, like I remember one of my first select board meetings and we were talking about the traffic on Route 20 going west in the fall. And someone was like, I can't really remember because it wasn't the fall, it was the spring or the summer. And somebody was like, I can't remember if there's a glare because it is going west. And people were sort of talking. And then um, we asked Chief Liver and he said, yes, there is. And he gave this like very specific, <laughs> very yeah. detailed explanation of what it's like to drive down Route 20 going west in the fall. And I just thought like, wow, he knows things that the rest of us don't know. <laughs> <He's back laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. it was fun to, to, to know what the town can change and the select board can change versus what's a state law or a federal law or mm -hmm. amendment to the federal law. And, and a lot of times people will think that, you know, a study can be done and that can decrease the speed limit on their street, but right. there can be negative results to that too. Yeah. Yeah. We've had to deal with that a lot on, um, on my street. So that it is, it is quite complicated. Um, but anyway, well, thank you for that. It is already 5.32, so we've kept you for about 10 minutes now. Um, Julianne, did you wanna ask anything else or? or we well, Kate, do you have questions for us? Oh, I yes. suppose this being a new committee, um, we don't know, we, um, well, we know, we know about it, but you know, we don't know, there's no history yet. So, but if you have any questions, but not at this point, I don't. Thank you. I think we'll probably meet once a month. Do you think, Kristen? Was that the? I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And there's some very passionate people who are looking forward to having this committee. So it was uh, lovely uh, to meet you. You too. Thanks so much for taking the time. Oh, thank you, and thanks for for applying. And um, well, so so what happens is we interview everyone. This little subcommittee rec makes their recommendation. It goes before the full board. So it might be a few weeks before we, we contact you. Okay. Right, because some of the people who are applying are the people who couldn't make it tonight. That's why you got switched to a different spot. So um, they're probably gonna come in a couple of weeks then. Okay. Yeah. And we'll get going in September. We will. Right. Yeah. That sounds great. Okay. Right. Thanks so much, Kate. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You too. Thanks. Ice cream is getting closer. Okay. You ready for Rachel? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, Julianne, you know Rachel, right? Hi, Rachel. I'm, Hi, Julianne. How are you? I'm I'm taking minutes, so I'm curious. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> but this is recorded, so I can watch the whole thing again, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. We're on YouTube, Julianne. We're famous. We're YouTube stars. I'm sure we have so many views, the North Row interview <laughs> committee, like tons. Anyway, um, Rachel Armstrong. So I, I think I can guess how you know about this committee. Yes. Um, so I don't really have to ask you that. Um, but I don't know, Julian might wanna know what your, what your prime motivation was. Maybe start with that for why you wanna be on this committee. Okay. Um, 
like a lot of people, maybe like the two of you, um, I got involved because there were some traffic safety issues in my neck of the woods. Um, we live very close to the industrial zone. And when you have a million square feet of warehouse space, it starts to impact the industrial zone. You have the residential area as well as the high school. Um, so those concerns got me involved along with some of my neighbors. And as we got involved, um, we learned that there were other traffic safety issues around town. And the process for managing those concerns was a little confusing, um, was probably redundant on the part of staff, because I'm sure they were asked, answering a lot of the same questions. So because it wasn't a public forum, the questions were answered on a one-on-one -on -one basis and, and a lot of residents didn't know the answers to the questions that they may have also had. Um, so it wasn't public. Um, and then um, I think people sort of submitted a concern and it was almost like this black hole. They didn't know the status of the concern. So I think when the temporary traffic safety committee decided to form a public safety committee, a public traffic safety committee, I, I was very pleased and thought, well, maybe some of the experience that I had um, in dealing with some of the issues that we had on Bartlett Street could help with the permanent traffic safety committee. And I love the charge of the committee that it asked for geographic diversity and user diversity. I think having lots of different perspectives and points of view um, really helps in, in solving and mitigating and um, prioritizing um, in a public forum. Yeah, thanks. I thought that was a good idea too. Um, okay, so uh, Julianne, what would you like to ask? I would like to ask, um, I would like to ask you please to explain a little more and on your, in your application, you said that while you were um, working on the issues in your neighborhood, you said that you gained some knowledge from working on, on the traffic issues, you know, in your neck of the woods. Um, could you give us an example of some of the things that you learned? Like, for example, did you learn about traffic safety committees while you were trying to figure out how to, as, as residents, um, solve the problems that, that you were facing at the time? Did you, you know, did you learn stuff about mass DOT or rules and regs, things like that? What, what were some interesting things you learned? Well, all of the above. I mean, I, I you know, watched as the temporary traffic safety committee reached out to other towns to learn about their traffic safety committees, I thought that was brilliant and sort of would love to see more regional collaboration on lots of traffic safety issues. Um, it, for us, um, the main issue was trucks. So we learned um, what it takes to get a truck exclusion and how difficult that can be if it if the alternate route is in a different town because that town needs to give you permission. Um, we learned about traffic studies. Um, so you can't, you can't just get a truck exclusion if you don't have a certain percentage of trucks on your road. Um, so that was interesting. We learned about signage and, um, you can't necessarily put up a sign on route 20 cause that's a state highway. So we don't have control over that the same way we don't have control over the lights in town. Um, we learned about the difficulty of enforcement. Um, from a zoning standpoint, because the zoning officer actually has to witness a moving violation and that's almost impossible. Um, and then lack of staff from a policing standpoint makes traffic uh, enforcement difficult as well. Um, we learned about safety zones, which we were able to get, um, which was great. Um, and um, I, I'm blanking out on some of the other stuff, but there, there was, we learned about forced turn lanes thanks to the ZBA that got a forced turn lane at the um, FedEx Amazon Drive, which will hopefully keep at least those trucks headed towards 495 in the right direction. Um, so what about that, um, 
what is it, the CMR? The CMR, the central mass, yes. That was a, they've been um, very they helpful. Again? It's the Central uh, Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. Um, there was a, a large, the, the traffic study I think was initiated by them or overseen by them. Um, and there was a, a meeting with them and residents on Bartlett Street, um, it was over a year ago, um, that basically validated a lot of our concerns. Um, unfortunately, because a truck exclusion would entail the permission of Marlboro, it's been difficult to get. Um, but I think it did validate that this wasn't just our perception that there actually was data to support our concerns. There were way too many trucks near a very vulnerable regional high school, a very vulnerable area. Okay. Wow, you learned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, I, I don't. I, I don't want to say traffic safety is my passion because I don't think anyone's ever said that. But I did learn a lot. <laughs> you're not. I may be the first person to ever say that, but yes, it's been quite interesting. You know, when you're very vested, um, it 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 does become quite an education. Um, I, I, you know, it's. I, I'm smiling because I. I it's been a collaboration between a lot of different neighbors and, you know, it's not a fun issue to work on, but it's certainly been great to see the community come together for, for something that we all care about. Mm -hmm. Rachel, there must have been a certain degree of frustration as you were going through this. Um, and, and so like when, you know, if you're appointed to the committee and there's a, ne a neighborhood experiencing something similar and there's this level of frustration, how would you advise them to manage that? I think you need to manage your expectations. I, I think that's what we've learned. Um, you know, this is, this is, you're dealing with towns, you're dealing with municipalities, you're dealing with the state, nothing's going to be quick. And I think even little baby steps you need to be grateful for um, and, and, and let that motivate you to continue to try and solve the issue. And, and solving may not be resolving completely, it may just be mitigating it, maybe making it better. I would love to see, you know, our situation solved, but we're never going to get 0% trucks on the road. So I, I think you need to let the little victories motivate you because you're moving forward, but managing your expectations. Yeah, it's kind of like being on the select board. <laughs> really? Or no, I know. Well, no, true. I'm, big fan, I'm, big, I'm big fans of the select board. So well, it's, it's basically life. I mean, right. It's yeah. a, right. Everything's yeah. changing all the time and you just have to. But but I mean, right, Kristen, you can take over here. But one of the questions we do ask is, I mean, this committee, we should have asked Kate this question, too, might require more time and research. and you know, do you feel that you have, am I still on because my screen? Yeah. Just... Yes, you're on. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, it, it, do you, do you feel like you have the, the time or the wherewithal to continue with, because there's always new innovation. You, you know, I've, I've been kind of curious about new, new things coming, you know, all, all of a sudden it seems like in central mass, we're seeing lots of uh, rotaries and things like that. So, um, are, well, are you up to uh, that? As, as you probably know from my application, I am a stay-at-home mom that that has two kids now in college. So, um, and I've, I've, you know, as I said before, I've already been spending a lot of time on this sort of unofficially. So, so to be able to do it in an official capacity would certainly um, hopefully, you know, help us you know, to, to be able to do an official capacity can, can actually get things done, I think, you know, um, I would hope. So yes, I do, I do have the time. I have the wherewithal. It's something I've already been doing. So now it would just be, you know, as an official member of a committee. Hmm. Right. Um... That's good to know. And that's a good point, Julianne, um, because going forward, I think 
if we are like changing roads in the downtown, like they will probably want to get the input of the traffic safety committee to a certain extent. They'd certainly get the police department and the DPW involved. So that there may be more more things that you all end up weighing in on, which I hadn't um, thought about, but that's a really good, that's, I'm sort of like taking your point a little bit farther, Julianne, and yeah. You know what, I, I at some point where we told about a, a course or, or a book or something that where people could get information. I'll have to, I'll have to go back and think about it. But anyway, um, I'm just thinking about when I went to that um, the master plan presentation at the high school. Yeah. And they were talking about changing roads around and things. So anyway, that may not happen. It just popped into my head, and we should probably let you go so we could get our another our next person who has been waiting a few minutes. But um, Thank you so much for volunteering. Thank you. I'm really happy to have so many very um, devoted and passionate and qualified um, volunteers so far. And thanks for getting us to this point. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, this is, I'm very glad that, that, you know, we've been working on this for a long time with a lot of people. So I, I think there are a lot of people that are happy we're at this point. Well, it's great yeah. that we got this whole connection thing too. So, you know. So what will happen is, um, well, a couple of the people who were supposed to interview for this committee tonight can't make it at the last minute. So we're gonna have to do their interviews in the next couple of weeks. So the, the appointments wouldn't happen till September probably. Mm -hmm. So just FYI on that, it'll be a little while, but thank you for being able to make it tonight. Uh, Check a few boxes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. See you later, Bye. Rachel. Bye. Bye. Hello, Diane. Hello again. I'll who, go ahead and let. Who is that little person in the hallway? Oh, I, someone in Tom Clark's office. He just ran over and to hear the parent was like, sorry. <laughs> There, so Julian, you could probably tell from the curtains behind me, I'm at town hall because we have a, we have guests at my house and I didn't think it would be quiet enough. So anyway, I can hear this little baby running around. Yes, <laughs> he's still out there. A great hallway for a child to run around. Right? <laughs> oh, nice and wide. Ever <laughs> taking the little ones to the hotels and <laughs> running up and down the halls. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let Jen and Rick leave both in. This okay. is the last one. Oh, right. Thank yes. you. Good. MPIC yep. now. Yeah, You're pivot welcome. to MPIC and find that. Hi. Hi, Jen. Hi. Oh, gosh, this is working. Good. Hi. How's it going? Good. Are you uh, on your way somewhere? Or <laughs> no. so I'm a at... space like Kristen is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm at the library um, for the nonprofit that Bish and um, <clears throat> Bick and uh, Suzanne have started. The North Row Arts Council. Uh -huh. So we're having a meeting. So I sort of snuck out of there. I'm meeting with you and then I'm sneaking back in. Wow. Okay. So Jen, um, you've met me. I don't think you've met Kristen or Rick Leaf. Is that correct? No. Correct. So, so Kristen is a select board person and she and I are the interview subcommittee. And Rick is the chairperson of the MPIC. And okay. it's always great when the chairperson comes and they can explain to you the schedule and the, you know, the goals and all of that sort of thing. So, okay. I'll give, I, I've talked enough. I'll give it back to Kristen here. Yeah. Well, hi, Jen. Thanks for, um, thanks for sh coming. And uh, 
interviewing and volunteering. That's always great. So um, you, it said in your application, you talked to Julianne about this. So you're a cultural council member? Yes. And so, but what specifically made you interested in MPIC? Well, I, um, now that I'm on the cultural council, I'd like for our town to become and have an area of a cultural district. So essentially that would just, um, it involves inv um, getting businesses and um, artistic groups, you know, such as a dance group or an artist in this district area and, um, and businesses and similar to what like downtown Marlboro has done with their cultural district, um, just sort of get, put a little extra life into a certain area of town. And so it's an app, it's an extensive application process. Um, however, if, you know, we get through all the steps that are involved and long story short, and we do end up with a cultural district, which is essentially part of, if not a, lo a large part of where this um, master plan sort of is, it's what would overlap. Um, then our, the cultural council would go from getting around $8,000 a year to like West Pro gets 17,000. Um, Maynard gets, I think, 17 or 18,000 dollars that we can um, give out as grant money to local groups who, you know, similar to what we're doing now. And it would just be a little more money, a little more things that we can help out with and infuse into the town. Okay, great. Interesting. Um, all right. Uh, Julian's taking copious notes here, I know. So. Um, but usually we switch off who asks questions. So Julianne, did you have a specific question you want to ask or? Um, so this is kind of a, um, a, 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 a tough, I think it's a tough question, but, um, and as a member of the, of the cultural council, I'm always, I'm always impressed with you know, the, the new ideas that are always coming forward. And I was wondering how, if you could explain how you keep public art and then, you know, kind of fresh. And also I'm wondering if, if we should be able to get this cultural district, would it be a place for all the, you know, for creative people in town to share ideas and kind of um, have, you, you know, more of an identity? I think that's, yes, I think that's a great goal. I think we can um, see there's a, uh, to be honest, I did watch the videos and the flyovers of what's happening and I was a little confused, but I'm hoping that somewhere in those buildings, I'm not really sure where they replace and what happens with that, but that's a question for later from me, from me but maybe somewhere in there, there's um, room for artist space that can be leased out to local artists or photographers or maybe um, a dance studio, maybe there's a spot for, um, not like a YMCA, but sort of like a, not, and not a boys and girls club, but sort of like a place where teenagers or middle school kids can walk from school to go, that sort of artsy feeling, um, you know, something like that, like a, a opportunity for people of different ages and different programs to come in. So whether it's leasing space, whether it's um, say there's a building and, and a lot of donations and money comes from wherever. And we say, you know what, this is gonna be our version of Hopkinton Center for the Arts, but it's North Bros, similar thing, you know, or like downtown Hudson, they've redone. It's such a transformation over there also. Um, so there's opportunities to bring businesses to bring the quiet artists who are in town sort of out, give them a place to showcase their work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, um, so uh, would you like to ask Rick any questions about the group or, or Rick would, um, if not, we'll just have Rick just tell you some things. But did you have any specific questions, Jen? Um, not specifically, no. I think um, I need to spend more time really understanding what the video 
plans are um, and the slide, you know, the slide presentation and, and just sort of make sure I know like how that's really happening with the buildings that are already in place. Like, right. I don't really understand that Have process. Have you watched some of their meetings? I did, mm -hmm. I did, but um, as a, like I live right down the street, I live like within a mile of downtown. So, um, and I walk the circles. So it's just um, tricky for me because there's only a couple of vac what looks like vacant properties that this could be okay. uh, implemented into. So that's something that, you know, I have to figure out, I guess. Okay. How all right. that works. Would you like to um, speak to some of these, just base the basic gist of, you know, what the committee's working with now and um, what your next few steps will be and that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, hi, Jennifer. It's nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. Virtually. Um, I guess the first thing is that the Master Plan Implementation Committee is responsible for the entire master plan. So the revitalization of the downtown is one thing that came out in the master plan. The master plan has sections on housing, it has sections on historic preservation, it has sections on transportation, um, and also cultural events kind of thing. So we just happened to prioritize the downtown as the first thing that we thought the town ought to start to work on that's in the master plan. The committee is going to exist long after the downtown study is completed and recommendations are made. And we're going to have to look at other aspects of the plan that have nothing to do with the downtown. So if you do join the committee, you're going to sit in on meetings that talk about what we need to do about housing in town, what we need to do about historic preservation in town, lots of other things. So from your comments, I just want to make sure you understand that although I think your background on the cultural council could be important to sort of fill in some of the gaps and where some of this downtown may go, we'll stop doing that. That'll get turned over to some part of the town to work on the eventual building out of a new downtown. And we'll start to work on a lot of other things that are in the master plan. So I just wanna make sure you feel comfortable if you join the committee, that if we start talking about other things that have nothing to do with the downtown or cultural yeah. events, that you still have an interest in participating in those things and giving your input onto a lot of other things that go on. Uh, so, so this is, this is getting a lot of publicity right now because it's the first thing we, we prioritized. But like I said, the master plan has nine different sections, only one of which deal with uh, with the downtown kind of thing. So I just want to make sure you're clear on that. But, you know, I do think that your background on the cultural council would certainly be helpful. But do you have any questions about just the, the plan in general and what else is going on that we're going to be working on over time besides the downtown? Um, I guess... Big picture wise, um, my question would be, you know, are we looking to sort of mirror what Natick used to be before their downtown became such a large um, thoroughfare, you know, on Route 30? Um, I, I just don't, are we just want to make sure we're still trying to keep ourselves as a small town. So, you know, it still has the feel of like a Dover or a Sherbin well, like a Westin downtown, you know, Route 20 Westin is lovely. They've done a really nice job um, of keeping it sort of New Englandy sort of style, um, but also giving, you know, they certainly have plenty of housing in Natick. They've developed different areas. Um, yeah, so I guess as you were pointing out, the the part that there are other aspects besides the downtown, I would just want to know, like big picture wise to make sure, because I really would like to keep it more small townish and not, um, you know, I, I enjoy being in the small town. That's why I'm here. So I just didn't know if we're, or we're going to just rebuild. <laughs> so it looks like Framingham and Natick. Yeah, I think that the input we've gotten in all the public meetings we've held, you know, is that people want to maintain a small town environment. Um, I think a lot of that's going to go into over time what our design review standards and planning standards look like, how our planning, uh, our zoning bylaw is modified over time kind of thing. Certainly a lot of the work that's going to be done is going to be done by private developers who uh, are going to want to come in and have the opportunity to do some of this redevelopment. The town isn't going to build out the new downtown publicly. There are some public parcels that the town owns that we'll have some control over a lot of the town is privately owned. And so we're going to have to talk about as we move out of the final report we're going to get from the consultants to see how we can 
manage a combination of private development matching up with a desire to not, you know, turn the town center into a framing him. But exactly what it's going to look like five years, 10 years from now is unclear. But to the extent that we want to change any regulations we have in town to try and um, get the town to look a certain way, that might be an important step. But we're not, we're not far enough down the road yet. The only thing we understand is that that a lot of private developers are going to get involved in this and work in, com in, in concert with the town. That's all we know right now. Yes. Well, and there's a significant amount of property in the downtown that's in LLC. So, um, yeah, I guess it's more kind of limited, not knowing who who owns what or even other parcels in the town, you know, to be developed um, later on. So I guess uh, there's a lot I have to learn or I get to learn through this process. So. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, just be aware that over the next few months, the emphasis is going to be in the downtown. And then once mm -hmm. we present the final consultant's report and decide how we're going to go forward, we're going to shift the emphasis of the committee away from the downtown to other aspects of the plan. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the committee, you'll start to see that we'll be talking about other things besides the downtown and sort of letting that play out between the town boards and committees and the staff. And we'll go on to say, what's the next thing in the master plan that we ought to bring forward to the town now that we've got the downtown sort of teed up. But we, the, the, our committee is not gonna be the guardians of the downtown going forward. Our job was to extract that from the plan, get the town to hire a consulting company to come up with a plan. And then eventually it's gonna be the town's responsibility with its own committees and staff to do what needs to be done. And we're gonna focus on other things after that. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. Okay, thanks, Rick. Yep. Um, so, okay. Um, so you're still interested? <laughs> <laughs> I am, yeah. Okay, great, mm -hmm. good. I, I, yeah, great. I took a quick, not gonna lie, I didn't read the full 95 page um, plan that I picked up from Diane today. I did kind of quickly peruse through. Um, I did start highlighting a couple of things that I thought were missing, but, and I'll certainly work back through that again um, and and see how it compares to what I think in my mind, um, what would be helpful for our town to keep it a small town. Yeah, well, I think like Rick said um, at the meeting I was at, uh, that was the consensus that the people who showed up at the meeting are interested in living in a small town and not turning it into something too big with uh, lots of busy, um, busy buildings and roads downtown or anything. Um, but the master plan is already created. So now it's a question of implementing thus the title master plan implementation committee. So it's a, mm -hmm. it's a lot of um, meetings and sort of strategy, how to get the thing that's already written, how to help the town get it done. Um, and a lot of the downtown stuff does seem, as the two of you were saying, it does seem like a lot of it's going to depend on one thing or another. And mm -hmm. um, is there's a lot of uh, pieces at work there. So, um, but I think having a, a cultural person involved in all, all of the pieces is not a bad thing. I am a, I'm a fan of the cultural council people. Thank you. And everything you all bring to um, all, all, every community. So um, yeah, do you have any other, any questions? Do you meet once a month, right, Rick? I, once a month, we've been trying to meet on the third Thursday of the month. That's kind of fallen apart this summer. And I think once we get back into the yeah. into the fall and winter, we'll try and get back to third Thursday of the month if we can. And did okay. someone remind me, did someone leave? That's why we have one spot. Yeah, so Fran Backstrand was a resident. She was a member of the uh, Council on Aging. And when our representative from the Council on Aging dropped off, she took the Council on Aging spot, which left a residence position open. Oh, I see. Okay. I see. I see. Okay, great. Okay. Super. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and and how how do we know how long the appointment is? How many years? Mike, that one might just be a year, right? Was Franz just a two? I don't remember. 
Well, Fran, Fran, hold on, I'll look it up. No, Fran, uh, yeah, I think Fran timed out and didn't reapply. So it's probably at least two years, if not close to three years, on that particular seat. I think. Okay. Because Fran's position, she 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 had the ability to be reappointed for three more years in April, and she chose not to. So I think this particular seat was renewing as of April first for three years. But let Diane verify that. Well, I, I just want to, um, I think, point out, I think I have this right, um, that, Jen, don't you have a little bit of a background or a lot of background in business or retail or something? I do. Is beneficial mm -hmm. as we... Yeah, that was my background. Uh, I was a sales manager for a long time and a buyer, uh, retail buyer for Bradley's 100 years ago. Um, but also I'm getting my MBA. So I'm actually doing strategic management right now, which is a really cool class. And it really looks at big picture sort of thing. So kind of excited to put that to good use. Um, it's forced me to look at a business a whole different way. So I think it will help me maybe with the committee, hopefully. Yeah. I might have a lot of questions being a new person. So I hope I don't annoy people with my dauntingly you know, a lot of questions. Okay. That would be my only thing. I'm definitely going to talk to everyone I know and everyone I know is going to ask me questions and then I'll be forwarding them on. So hopefully that doesn't annoy anyone. Other than that, I've been really excited to be part of the group. Great. Uh, Diane, so did you figure out how long it is? Yeah, I think we're going to put her um, for a partial two year to expire in 2025. Okay. And then, of course, she'd be up for reappointment at that time. Right. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, Kristen, just review how this happens. You, you know. Well, right. So, Jen, so Julian and I will make a recommendation tonight. And then um, we, the select board has to vote on your appointment, the full board. So um, we just recommend and then we'll go, and I think our next meeting, I didn't write them down in my calendar yet, but our next meeting is in September. Um, so it'll be a little while, Okay. September 11th maybe. So oh yeah, so it'll be a little while. Um, but as Rick said, the it's hard to get people to show up at meetings in the summer when people are on vacation and stuff, so. Makes sense. I'll offer too, Jennifer, if you are um, appointed and you'd like to spend some time with me before the first meeting you attend mm -hmm. to answer questions or just go over things to give you some more background, you know, through Diane, you can get my contact information and we can definitely talk, you know, before okay. the first meeting you attend if you'd like to do that. Yes, that'd be great. And it'll give me some time to review, um, really read the plan that she gave me today. And because it's, you know, larger than the one that's online on the website. And yeah. yeah, I'm sure I'll have a bunch of questions. So that'd be great. Thank you. Sure. All right. Well, thanks both of you for coming. Thanks for helping out, Rick. And thanks for volunteering, Jen. Okay. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Thanks. Sure. Take care. Bye -bye. Nice to see you. Good night. Good night. So you guys don't need me for anything else, right? You're all set. No, we're all set. Thanks, Rick. Well, that was really helpful, Rick. Thank you so much. Okay. See you around. Yep. Okay. So we have three more people to interview for traffic safety, but no other applicants for this MPIC seat. So we could technically re make a recommendation about Jen tonight. Would you like me to make a motion? Yes, please. I move that we nominate and help me out here. Nominate for Jen appointment for the resident position on MPSC to be completed in 2025. Second. Okay. Roll call vote, Julianne. Aye. And I, Kristen, vote aye. So yes, I thought she was a really good, um, I guess we should have discussed before we yeah. did that, but I, I think, um, we agreed. I could tell that it was uh, 
I think she would bring new things um, as far as her cultural council background, but also if she's working on an MBA, that's a more practical mm -hmm. um, side of things that she can kind of bring to the group and maybe some fresh perspectives from her classes, you know? And just say that, um, you know, when she, when she has an idea, she puts a lot of energy and work into it. This cultural district that she's um, investigating, you know, she's making the phone calls, she's getting all the information, figuring out how we can possibly do it. And, um, you know, she'll, she'll do the work. I can yeah. tell you that. That's great. Yeah. Ooh, that's and, you know, one other thing that's really important is that in so many of the presentations from Weston and Sampson, they always say that to revitalize a downtown, um, public art, cultural events are, are some of the things you need. So mm -hmm. she, there should, should be a connection between cultural council and MPIC, as far as I can say, so. No, and there's money in it too, which I think people don't pay attention to when they talk about, oh, cultural council, but cultural council has access to a lot of money. Mm. And she seems to be particularly well-versed in how to really make the most of the um, opportunities the cultural district in particular could bring to the town. So let's, let's have her more involved. And if this is how she wants to get more involved, great. So we should also approve the minutes. Okay. Um, I, I move to accept the May 16th, 2023 minutes as presented. Second. Um, roll call vote, Julianne. Aye. And I, Kristen, vote aye. Minutes are uh, official, passed, whatever. Accepted. Accepted. That's the word I was not sure. I couldn't remember. Diane, okay. is there any other business we should be doing tonight? There is not. Okay. okay. So then I move to adjourn. adjourn. Yes, okay. second. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.